Bibles and go with me to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4 tonight. I certainly hope that you stopped on the way in and picked up one of the lesson handouts. Did, anybody, did everybody get a handout that wanted a handout? All right. Matthew chapter 4 this evening. Matthew chapter 4 starting in verse 1. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1 this evening. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Now we've done thus far. It's hard to believe. Seven weeks, seven weeks of the uh, uh, Bible adventure series in the Old Testament. And now we're switching over uh, and uh, we're going to do seven weeks in the New Testament. And uh, you know one of the hardest things in this series is narrowing down the list. Because it's like uh, I put it out to, uh, as we've been praying about it and praying for it. And I put it out to my staff and said, hey, uh, just, uh, you know, I... You know, I'm praying, but I want to get your input as well. What do, what do you think? What are some of the most exciting uh, passages in the Bible? And you know, the problem is narrowing it down to just seven in the old. And so let me tell you something. You really get started thinking about it. Your Bible is full of some of the most amazing things that you've ever seen in your life. But tonight, I want to uh, point your attention to Matthew in chapter 4. Matthew in chapter 4. And tonight, I want to look at not so much the specifics of the temptation of Jesus, when the devil tempted Jesus. But I want to look at the principles and, and, and what we see here, because, listen, the devil's not going to tempt you like the devil tempted Jesus. Do you know why? You're not Jesus, all right? And, and so the devil's not going to tempt you like he tempted, but he is going to tempt you, and he follows a particular pattern. And when we see the devil's pattern, we can understand how he tempts us. Now, notice with me, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1, notice that very first word. Read that first word with me. Then, very important, listen, every word in your Bible is important. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit. What's different about that word Spirit in your Bible? It is capitalized. That means it's who? It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, that means he went 40 days, 40 full days without food and water, 40 full nights without food and water. He was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, you notice how the Bible identifies, God identifies the devil. He is the tempter. Every, when you say, you know, I just feel I'm tempted. Where's that coming from? Well, it's coming from the devil. Came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, when Jesus said it is written, you say, where was it written? Well, it was written in the Bible. All right. It was so, so if I were to ask you this question, what is Jesus referring to? You would say those two words, what? The Bible. I would give you C minus on that answer. Let's try that again. When Jesus said it was written, he's referring to, let's say it together, the Bible. Exactly. Now, I want you to notice this pattern. Jesus establishes a pattern of how to be victorious against temptation. How many of you would like to be more victorious over temptation? Raise your hand tonight. All of us would. Well, then we have to follow the master's pattern. Now, look at verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, that's Jerusalem, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written... He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. That's in the, that's in the Psalms. Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now personally, I personally believe this is the most diabolical temptation of the devil. The devil will sometimes use the Bible against you. And boy, that will get a young Christian confused right there. And in verse 8 it says again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. See, that's what the devil really wants. The devil wants to steal the rightful worship from God. The one person who deserves worship, he wants the worship. The devil always wants to try and replace God in your life and in my life. Notice then in verse 10, and then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. What an amazing passage of Scripture. Let's pray, and let's jump into this passage tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for God revealing, uh, Lord, to us this most private, Lord, this... Uh, 
most uh, obscure moment in the Lord's life. Lord, how it has helped. Lord, millions and billions of Christians over the years. And God, I pray tonight you would allow it to do its intended work. And God, it would instruct us and it would encourage us. And Father, it would help us, Lord, as we face the daily uh, temptations of the devil. Because God, he is the tempter. And Lord, I pray tonight you would help us to learn, Father, how to overcome temptation. Lord, we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And amen. Now, I want to just say uh, right here, thank you, Jesus. Now, you remember, notice back, go back with me to verse 1. It says, and then was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. This was a most private time. And can I just say, usually, temptations come. You know when temptations usually have a time, temptations have a place. Sometimes temptations have a person, especially, listen, if you've got children, if you've got grandchildren, listen, temptations come in a time, temptations come in a place, and many times temptations come in a person. I'm not in the notes because it wouldn't fit. But listen, many times temptation comes when we're all alone. My friend, one of the greatest dangers in this day, one of the greatest dangers in this day is to be all alone with a digital device. This right here, can I just say to every person, young or old, this device right here and the the, the ones you hold in your hand, listen, can be a portal to the depths of hell and the untold, just unimaginable immorality and ungodliness. Listen, my friend, watch yourself when you're alone. Now, we get recorded here a divine record of a private time in Jesus' life. Listen, there was no cameras there. There was no disciples there. There was no newspapers there. Listen, you know who was there? It was God and the devil. But the Lord revealed to this this private moment of temptation. Now, if you're you're taking notes, uh, uh, this is recorded in three places. You can just put this in the notes here. If you're interested, Matthew 4 is the longest narrative. Mark chapter 1 has a very short, just a couple verses on it. And Luke chapter 4 also records the temptation of Jesus. Now, listen, but let's jump into this tonight. I want you to write the first thing down. Uh, the, the then, T-H-E-N, the then of Jesus' temptation. Notice back with me in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. We pointed out, that I pointed out that very first word, then was Jesus led up into the wilderness. So when the Bible says a then or a therefore or wherefore, you know what you do? You pause and See what it's there for, okay? Now, what was the then? Now, please remember, when the Bible was written, when, when Matthew sat down and wrote the Gospel of Matthew, he didn't say chapter 1, verse 1, all right? No, he just uh, took a scroll, and he started writing under the inspiration of God, and it was one really long letter. And somewhere along the lines, there were, you say, what did they do with before they had the internet and television and radio and all those different things? You know, they did a lot more productive things. Somewhere along the line, somebody sat down and said, you know, well, let's break this thing up. It'd be a lot easier to have chapters and, and verses. And you know what? They, so uh, God, by his wonderful grace, gave his people who cared enough about us to be able to break the Bible down. And, and so please understand, the break between chapter 3 and chapter 4 wasn't originally there. So when we say then, let's, let's back up a few verses into chapter 3 and see what was the then. Look at verse 13. Then, you see that in verse 13? Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John, uh, it's John the Baptist, to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? What a great perspective. Listen, my friend, never get too proud that God would use you. Listen, understand, at all times, listen, it's just by the grace and mercy of God that we're enabled to do anything for God. And Jesus answering and said unto them, suffer it now to be so, or mean allowing it. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he suffered him, I mean John baptized him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the, and that means behold, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You see that? You have the Father speaking from heaven. You have the Spirit descending in the form of a dove, and you have the Son of God. By the way, that's why we believe in the triune God. The Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three distinct persons and personalities in one God. Not three gods in one, one God in three persons. The Bible clearly teaches the doctrine of the Trinity. You say, well, the Trinity's not in the Bible. Newsflash, the Bible's not in the Bible, all right? The Bible is nowhere, nowhere in the Bible you find the word Bible. And so don't worry, don't let that throw you. But notice, 
the then. Jesus, so put this in context, Jesus had, uh, the last time you pick up Jesus' life, he was 12 years old. He was a preteen. We call him a tween. And he was just about to go into his teenage years. And from the time of 12 to the time of about 30 years old, there was a period of silence. Jesus, the Bible teaches us, went back to his home. The Bible says he was subject unto his parents. You hear that, kids? Jesus listened to his mom and dad. Listen, if, if Jesus can listen to his mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, you can listen to your mom and dad and grandma and your grandpa. Now listen, Jesus just got busy doing what teenagers do. He grew up. He did his chores. He learned to trade. He listened to mom. He listened to dad. He lived an ordinary life for the, uh, for the next 20 some odd years. But then Jesus, look at verse 13, then Jesus stepped out into service for his father. And one of the things that I've done in the last several years is this. When anyone comes as a candidate for baptism, when anyone comes as a candidate for church membership, when anyone comes and says, Pastor, we want to take a step forward and begin to serve God, I say, that's wonderful. That's great. That's fantastic. That's marvelous. But please understand. Now, this is not a Bible phrase, but I found it to be true. Higher levels mean bigger devils. Higher levels mean bigger devils. Listen to me. That Look at verse 4, chapter 4 and verse 1 in your Bible. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Not when he was 13, not when he was 15, not when he was 17, not when he was 28. It was not until Jesus stepped forward into the active service of his Father that the devil said, okay, let's push back. Every time you try to push forward for Jesus, the devil is going to, listen, God's going to be cheering you on, and the devil's going to meet you head on. And he's going to try and push you back. That's the then. So my friends, as we look at the temptation of Jesus tonight, recognize this. Anytime you take a step forward for the Lord, please understand the devil's going to be there to push you back. That's the then of temptation. It's very important to understand the then. Listen, if you're just going to coast, if you're going to come and you're just going to sit, listen, there's nothing wrong with coming to church. You keep coming to church. It's biblical and it's godly. You're just going to, listen, but if you're going to just continue on, uh, happy to coast where you are, listen, more than likely the devil is going to probably just be okay with it. But when you decide to step up and stand up and step forward and say, listen, I want to do more for the glory of God, that's the then. And then is when the devil will bring on a, a greater level of temptation. It happens every time. I've seen it, my wife and I have seen it so many times over the years. Now, number two, number two, I want you to notice, write this word down, the leader, the leader of Jesus' temptation. Very important. Notice here in verse one again, then was Jesus led up of, read those next two words with me, the Spirit. Now, before we stand up and stomp our feet and say, that dirty devil, how dare he tempt the, the, the lovely Lord Jesus Christ? And by the way, he deserves that, all right? Listen, it's going to be a wonderful day when Jesus throws the devil in hell. Can I get an amen right there? It's going to be a wonderful day when the tempter and the liar and the deceiver gets bound and thrown into an eternal lake of fire, my friend. That's going to be a wonderful day. That's going to be shouting day, hallelujah. But please understand, sometimes in the will of God, Sometimes in the will of God, God allows you and I to be led, not of the flesh. It doesn't say he was led of the self. Number two, it doesn't say in your Bible he was led of Satan. It says he was led of the Spirit. My friends, please understand, sometimes the teacher will allow you to be tested. Can I say that again? Sometimes the teacher will allow you to be tested. And sometimes God's going to let you and I go through periods of growth and periods of peace and periods of grace and periods of relatively less opposition. But there are times in the will of God that God is going to allow you and he's going to allow me and he's going to lead us by his spirit in the will of God. He's going to lead us and he's going to lead us into a wilderness. Now, wilderness is not fun. A wilderness is not fun. Wilderness means nothing. In the Bible terms, a wilderness means desert, sand, no shade, no water, no food, no fun, no nothing. In fact, in the Gospel of Luke, it, Luke, it says this. He says in the Gospel of Luke, he was there with the wild beasts. 
The desert was the place of the lions. The desert was the place of the hyena. The desert was, Jesus was outside. Listen, he, he was literally, and we would call it bivouacking. He, listen, no tent, no sleeping cot, no gun, no staff, no, no defense. And he was out there day and in the heat of the day and the cold of the night, lonely, deprived. He, listen, he was all God and all man. He was, listen, he just got lonely like you. He got hot like you get hot. He got tired. He got hungry. He got weak. He got weary just like we did. And at night, he'd hear the, 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 the roaring of the lions. No home to protect him. No gate. No protection. No one there. And listen, there are times where God will allow you and I and the will of God to go through seasons of the wilderness and seasons of terror and seasons of temptation. Listen, God will allow you to do that to show, listen, sometimes God wants to show you that you have matured to a place where you can grow. You, he he wants to show you that you have matured to a place, listen, where you can stand some opposition. You know what? The father knew the son, he was ready. The father knew that the son, listen, when the devil came to push on him, he was going to push back. I want you to picture in your mind the football as they're getting ready in the fall for football time. And the, the, those young men will scrimmage and they'll get on the line. And there'll be those, uh, those, those push dummies in front of them. And they'll, get, and they'll push on them things. They, they're developing hardness. They're developing endurance. Listen, sometimes God's going to let you go into it. Listen, he's not looking for you to fail. He's looking for you to win. God's not, listen, he didn't lead you out there to abandon you, uh, to see how miserable you are. God will bring us to a place of temptation. Listen, he wants you to ace the exam. God wants you to demonstrate that you got faith and faithfulness. You got a little spiritual spunk to you. And listen, that you'll be able to weather the storm. The leader of Jesus' temptation. Now, number three, I want you to notice in verse two, write this down, the duration, the duration of Jesus' temptation. It says this, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungry. He was hungry. Medical science teaches us that when you begin to abstain from food and water, your body and your digestive system will shut down for about a period of about 40 days. It's about the longest time a person can go uh, without doing serious damage to their internal organs and system. But after 40 days uh, uh, where your body many times will pause that hunger sensation, after 40 days it will return alerting you that you're, you're now entering a critical phase that if you don't replenish your system it will literally begin to digest itself and dissolve itself. It would literally begin to die. And those temptations, the, the, those uh, sensations of hunger will return. Uh, the point here is this. After these 40 days and this temptation, notice with me in verse 11, down in verse 11, it says, then the devil leaveth him. And, the, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. In the Gospel of Luke, it says, and the devil departed for a season. Uh, the, the thing I want to point out to you is this. Temptations are temporary. Write that down in your notes if you want. Temptations are temporary, all right? Now, when you're in a temptation, all right, it seems like they'll last forever. Can I get an amen right there? I mean, when you're facing that particular, uh, I call it the crucible, all right, and, and you're facing that particular desire, that particular thought, and you're fighting that thing, it seems like it'll never end. But my friend, listen, it will end temptations have a timeline temptations have a timetable temptations will come and temptations will go say that with me temptations will come and temptations will go that's why the bible says blessed is the man that endureth temptation that means hold out it means hang on it means stay fast listen it's like you're on that diet and you want that ice cream all right you want that ice cream. It's like when they tell you, the doctor tells you, you got to fast. You got to go in. You got to do that blood work in the morning. You can't eat. You, you got to go and you got to get it. That's why, right. listen, when I do blood work, it's like 7.01 a.m., all right? When the lab opens at 7 o'clock, all right? And uh, the coffee is sitting in the car, probably with a muffin beside it or at least some toast or a granola bar or something. A and listen, the point is this. Don't give in to the devil. Listen, the temptation, it came, and the temptation will leave. 
there is a timeline and a timetable on temptation. And when you're in the temptation, the devil says the only way to get through this is to give in. Look, just give in and, and, and you get through it and I'll leave you alone. And that's true, but the devil will leave you alone only for a short period of time. The devil's going to find your weak spot. And he's going to keep pushing and pushing until he finds where you break. And you know what? And then he'll always just come back. He knows that you'll last this long and then you'll give in. You know what? What God wants you to show the devil is, you're, listen, through the power of God, through the indwelling Holy Spirit, listen, you don't have to give in to temptation. You don't have to listen to the devil. You don't have to gratify the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. You can say no to sin and Satan and the devil. You know why? Because the temptation will come and the temptation will go. Endure. Say no. Resist the devil. And the Bible says he'll flee from you. So that's the, uh, that's the duration of, the tem- of tem- Jesus' temptation. Now I want you to know this. This is something that honestly I, I never saw until I was studying it. It's interesting. The Bible is always contextual. The the Bible always speaks to right now, listen, these words, this event happened 2,000 years ago. They were written down uh, 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 2,000 years. People have been preaching and teaching. Uh, Listen, there was no no electricity. There was no internet. There was no nothing when when these pages were written down. But listen, I want you to show you a very current temptation. Notice with me in verse 3. Look at verse 3. And the tempter came to him and and, and he said, if thou be the Son of God. Now notice with me in verse 6. Look at verse 6. And he saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God. You see that? This was the identity temptation. This is the identity temptation. How many, listen, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But if you're paying attention at all to modern day society, there is a prevalent temptation and a, and a very prevalent problem in society today. And by the way, but moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, listen, perk up your ears, pay attention. Because one of the things that the devil is trying to undermine is people's identity. People are confused. You know where that came where, All of a sudden, listen, I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. We weren't confused. A boy was a boy and a girl was a girl. We weren't confused about that. We knew what bathroom to use. We knew what, you know, we, we knew what was, who, what, listen, I, I it, it's strange. And I know looking to some of you, you're like, yeah, I know, it's strange. Look at, listen, ever, listen, you grew up in the 60s, you know strange things happened in the 60s and 70s, okay? The devil has his thing, listen, the 80s, all right? You remember the hair in the 80s, all right? You remember all that crazy stuff that happened in the 80s? Listen, every generation has their thing. The people that didn't grow up in the 80s are looking at me like, no, I have no idea. And uh, listen. So, this generation, right now, you know where the devil's hammering? He's hammering identity. This is the identity temptation. He said, listen, if thou be the Son of God. The devil was trying to, was trying to undermine Jesus' listen. Jesus was just a man. He was God and man all at the same time in the flesh. Listen, but the humanity of Jesus, he was trying to trick Jesus into questioning, am I the Son of God? Listen, he was hungry. Please put it in context. He was lonely. He'd been 40 days without seeing a soul. He'd been 40 days terrorized day and night. Please understand, he was in a very weak place, physically speaking. That's usually when the devil comes. The devil doesn't come when you're read up and prayed up and and you're you're walking in the spirit. He comes, listen, when when we're at our lowest of the low. But one of the things that the devil will go after is your identity. That's why the devil is going after the identity, confusing young men into thinking they're young women. Or young women thinking that they're young men. Uh, Can I just say, even in the 30s and 40s and 50s, we got men and women, and they're losing the, the, the surety of their identity. Where did that come from? That comes from the devil. Please understand that's what the source is. Now, number two, or not number two, the next thing. Uh, the trust temptation. Again, I, I want to look at the trust temptation. I want to look at the, the underlying issues. What is the devil trying to tempt us? Well, the first way, area we see Jesus tried to tempt the devil, or the devil tried to tempt Jesus, sorry, let me say that backwards, is this. He tried to tempt him to doubt his identity of who and what he was. Don't let the devil tempt you in that way. Number two, I want you to notice in verses three and four, the trust temptation. The trust temptation. It says this, he says, um, 
It says, if thou be the Son of God, now listen, command that these stones be made bread. Now, why was that? He was hungry. But he, Jesus, answers that it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This was the trust temptation. This is why it's so important to understand, listen, Jesus knew he was in the will of God. Jesus knew that he was there at God's will and the, and, and the, the Spirit's leading. And so if God had brought him there, listen, I, I've said it this way in the past, if God brought him to it, God would bring him through it. If God brought him to it, God would bring him through it. This is what the devil said, you can't trust God to take care of you. You can't trust God. Listen, God brought you, listen, you, you're out here and you're hungry and you know you're hungry. He was the creator. He created the, the human body. He knew at 40 days the situation was dire for the need of nourishment. Listen, the devil knew that and, and Jesus knew that. The devil was trying to get Jesus to, to stop trusting God the Father to provide his needs. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand tonight, but I don't believe there's a single one of us in here that can't honestly say that there has been a time in my life where a, a bill has come up or a, a diagnosis has come down or a situation has arisen and you get that lump in your stomach and it moves up to your throat and you, you feel the perspiration begin to break out on your forehead and you get a little clammy and you're like, I have no idea. I have no idea how we're going to make this. I don't know how we're going to get through it. I don't know how we're going to pay that bill. I don't know how we're going to deal with this. I don't know how we're going to address this situation. And literally, you have no idea. What the devil is trying to get you to do is to stop trusting your heavenly father. Listen, my friend, you and I, we have a heavenly father. Can you say amen to that? He's a good God. Can you say amen to that? He knows your needs. Can you say amen to that? And listen, if God brought you into that situation, God will bring you through that situation. One of the temptations that the devil will bring us repeatedly is to stop trusting God. We say, oh man, I got I to figure this out. I got to go get another job. I got to do this. I got to go here. I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to. Uh, watch yourself. When you, when you, I got to, that means that you're taking it from God and saying, God, I, I got to do this because God, you can't handle it. That's a temptation from the devil. Now, number, the next thing. The next temptation, the first was an identity temptation. The second was a trust temptation. The third is a truth-twisting temptation. Truth-twisting temptation. Now, I've got to be honest. As a young Christian, man, the devil had me so, so strung out. I didn't, sometimes I didn't know which way was up. Notice with me in verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. He took him to the, he, listen, he took him to Jerusalem. And not only did he take him to Jerusalem, he set it on a pinnacle of the temple. He took him to church. You know, sometimes the devil will meet you right in church. That's right. And saith unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written. He's like, oh yeah, I know the Bible too. You know, the devil knows the Bible. He probably knows the Bible better than a lot of us. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against stone. You know, that's a word for word correct quote from the Bible. Sometimes, listen, the devil will twist the truth. Boy, for a young Christian, that's very confusing. Because you're like, well, it's, it's, I don't know, it's Bible. I mean, it's Bible. It's, it's Bible. Like, I don't know. Sometimes you get these weird leadings, and you're like, well, I don't know, it's in the Bible. Listen, my friend, please understand. When God, in 1 Corinthians 14, 41, it says God is not the author, or 14, 40, God is not the author of confusion. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 41, let all things be done decently and in order. God is the God of of clarity all right god is the god of clarity when the bible when, when there's an issue or a confusion and even the bible's involved you're like i don't understand this doesn't make sense you go whoa pause pause where's this confusion coming from the devil the devil always brings confusion god always brings clarity now, how do you answer that? How do you straighten that out? Listen, please understand. Two scriptures do not, the scriptures do not conflict. The scriptures do not conflict. You, you know that scriptural roles don't conflict. My role, listen, as a husband does not conflict with my role as a pastor. It's not one wins and the other loses. 
your role as a husband or a wife, a mother or a father, listen, doesn't conflict with your role as a servant of God or a child of God. Those roles, listen, in God's will, they don't, conf- they don't conflict. They, listen, uh, they, uh, they mesh together. They coordinate together. And the will of God, listen, the, 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 the struggle is we have to figure out and we got to walk through that and, and prove what the will of God. We got to find out what that, uh, that right uh, balance is. Now listen, the devil, let me just sum this up. The devil will sometimes even use the Bible to try and confuse you out of the will of God. Don't let the Bible, don't let the devil do that. How do you answer that? You answer it with Bible truth. Now look at the next thing. Look at the next thing. This is in, 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 in verse 8. We see this. The next temptation of the devil is the shortcut temptation. The shortcut temptation. Notice with me in verse 8 again. The devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. By the way, that's not an exaggeration. And he saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. By the way, uh, you say, why is this in the Bible? Well, number one, this is in the Bible. This whole passage is in the Bible. Number one, for you to understand that Jesus understands. Because you and I could go home and have a pity party. Like, Jesus doesn't understand how hard it is. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Number two, Jesus put this in the Bible so you know, listen, how, what the devil's M.O. Jesus wants you to learn the devil's M.O. to go, oh, that's how this guy works. I'm aware. I'm, I'm advised. Number two, or number three, Jesus put this in the Bible so you and I could find out what's the devil's real point. So if thou wilt fall down and worship me, that's what the, de- the devil wants to take God's place in your life. Sim- simple, put and simple. The devil wants to take God's place in your life. Now, Jesus said here, and Jesus saith unto him, get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, this was the shortcut temptation. Now, the, G, listen, the devil knows the book of Revelation. The devil knows he's going to lose. Jesus knows that the devil's going to lose. They both know that Jesus is going to be the Lord of lords and King of kings. He's going to set up his kingdom, and it will be an eternal kingdom. Can anybody say it? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, here's the difference. God's will was for Jesus to accomplish that, listen, through the cross. God's will was for Jesus to experience the victory, listen, through the cross. The cross is death to self. The the cross is submission to the Father. The cross is the humiliation of this life and the end of all of our will. The devil's path The devil's path is through compromise. The Father's will is through the cross. The devil's will is through compromise. He said, Jesus, listen, you can have have it, but you don't have to go to the cross. Jesus knew what the cross was. My friend, the cross was, listen, every dirty sin, every thought, everything that you and I have ever done, God took all of the wrath, that was that bitter cup, all of the wrath that should have been poured out on us for eternity, to satisfy the righteous judgment of a thrice holy God was poured out on Jesus. The wrath of God God the Father was poured out on His Son to purchase my forgiveness. That was the cross. The devil said, hey, you can have it the easy way. That's the shortcut temptation. Hey, you can have have it, Jesus. Hey, you're going to get it all anyway. Why don't you just go the easy way? Now, you don't have to raise your hand, but I can guarantee you there's many times that we've thought about having what we want, having something, listen, or someone, and we want it the easy way. We get the temptation, well, I can just have it the easy way. Guess where that shortcut temptation comes from? That comes from the devil. Listen, my friend, the devil will always offer you a shortcut, but listen, the devil's shortcut never leads to victory. It always leads leads to defeat. God's will will never be accomplished through, through, through compromise. Now lastly, go with the, one last thing. Jesus' tactic for defeating temptation. Now everybody look up here. Could Je- Yes or no? Could Jesus just have been ping and just flick the devil off into outer space? Could he have done that? 
Yes or no? How many of you guys would have liked to have seen that? All right. I would have liked to have seen that. Okay. That would have been great. Now, can you do that? Yes or no? No. So why would Jesus go through this most painful exercise as an example, as an illustration? Please understand, Jesus did this for me and he did it for you. Because I'm not omnipotent, and neither are you. And you and I, listen, with our very word, cannot defeat Satan. And Jesus knows that. And so Jesus gave us a pattern. He said, listen, everybody, you watch what I'm doing. And when the temptation comes to you, you do the same. Notice back again, look at verse 4. And he answered and said, read those three words with me. It is what? Written. Go back down, look at verse 7. Jesus saith unto him, read these three words with me, it is written. Notice again in verse 10, he says, get thee hence, Satan, why? For it is written. Three times the devil came after Jesus. Three times Jesus answered him with the word of God. You know why? Because it's powerful. The word of God is powerful. Jesus modeled the pattern for spiritual victory. You, you fight spiritual temptation with spiritual truth we battle spiritual temptation with spiritual truth that's why when you come this sunday when you come this sunday i'm going to give you seven things that every single christian needs to do with the bible now it's not just an altruistic exercise it's just not we get in the bible to get in the bible listen my friend we get in the bible because when the devil comes to tempt us and try us we can be prepared to bring battle, spiritual battle against the devil. Listen, you can't battle the devil with a scripture you don't know. You can't stand on a truth that you don't know. So that's why we get in our Bible. And so I hope you come back this Sunday. I'm going to show you seven things to do with the Bible so that you and I can be more spiritually prepared, listen, to resist the temptations of the devil let's go lord in a word of prayer father we come before you this evening and we thank you lord you went through all of us all of this god to be our great example jesus thank you jesus you you can lord you you showed us in the book of revelation with just your very word you can defeat the devil but lord i thank you that you understood we can't and so lord you you've given us the written word of god And Lord, you've given us, Father, the spiritual tools we need, God, to be prepared for temptations and God to win, and Lord, the victory over temptations. Lord, I pray we'd understand that tonight. Lord, I pray that, that Lord, as tonight as we've exposed the devil's tactics, and Lord, we've exposed, Lord, the, the underlying issues under many of the very specific temptations we face, God, we all face the same temptations. Uh, We face the same temptations, Lord, to doubt our identity, who we are in Jesus Christ. Uh, We face that temptation, Lord, not to trust you. Uh, God, we face the temptation, uh, Lord, to take the shortcuts that the devil offers us instead of taking, Lord, the way of the cross. Lord, I pray that we clearly see how the devil is trying to work in our life. And God, I pray that we would understand that these things are coming from the devil. And God, I pray we'd have greater clarity about it. Lord, greater resolve against it and so father we need you tonight lord i pray that you'd help us in jesus name amen we'll stand this evening with heads bowed and eyes closed a time of invitation as the music